You have to look at the, um, the social context of what we tried to achieve or began achieving in the early 70s. You had the Vietnam War, you had uh, Flower Power, you had Carnaby Street, you know, you had colour, colour, colour. And here I was setting off on a path to make surfboards. So instead of using resin art forms that came out of the 60s, you know, I looked at trying to find and use airbrush as a way to not only set our surfboards apart, but create a vehicle for more individual expression. I received a letter in the mail, believe it or not, from young Martin. You know, he felt he wanted to add to the concept that I'd been working on. And between the two of us, we got together in December 1971. And with my shaping and Martin's airbrushing, the story began. The first batch of boards in early 1972. Well, wow factor. Like, wow, not only from my point of view in what Martin was able to achieve with a very early form of expression using airbrushes, but um, the fact that you know, we had to develop all our own materials to be used with polyurethane and urethane in surfboards. Um, Martin's capacity, he was basically a, an alchemist. We worked together to create a colour palette, but Martin's efforts in combining you know, surfboard materials and, and paints was just incredible. The net result was, over time, he's managed to achieve true artistic integrity that I think has influenced a worldwide culture, a global culture of surfing, and still does to this day.